guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back at the Rady Cave, and the biggest news is now we finally have some real, tangible updates on my Shelby GT350R. So let's do a quick recap. As many of you are aware, I love the Shelby GT350. I love the Voodoo engine. I love the Tremec 6-speed manual transmission. I love the way it looks. I was fortunate enough, thanks to all of you and everybody else, to be able to put an order in. Remember, we had a fight for that order to get an allocation over at Walker Ford. You guys helped me make that happen. The allocation was given, and then the whole build date was supposed to happen. Well, as you are aware, a pandemic broke out, and that kind of skewed all of the plans on exactly how this was going to pan out. Now, the main thing about my particular GT350 is, remember I had that little surprise that we're going to go all the way. We're going to go with the GT350R, but also I'm able to get the Heritage Edition, which is that special edition to honor Ken Miles, that man who was featured in the Ford versus Ferrari movie and did so much development work, not only for the Ford GT40, as you saw in the movie, but also was the man that took the Mustang from a secretary's car and turned it into a track weapon known as the Shelby GT350 and GT350R. So because of everything getting kind of switched over, getting kind of moved down the line, the build date was supposed to happen in April. That came and went. Then May came and went. Well, here's the great news. I now, and I'm going to have that come up on the screen right now, show you exactly what is the process that the car went through. Because right now the car is built and it is sitting at the factory ready to be shipped out. So if you look at the image that I have, this is basically what Walker 4 gets from the, from the actual factory showing where along the build schedule is the Shelby GT350R. And if you notice, it all takes place in Flat Rock, Michigan. That's where they build Mustangs and the Shelbys, uh, including the upcoming Mach 1. It all started, technically, that start date is going to be June 16th. That's when, uh, if you notice, the car was sent out to get painted. And remember, part of the Heritage Edition, it's not a performance um, edition. It's all about making it aesthetically look like that 1965 Shelby GT350 that Ken Miles helped develop and, and also race and, and win races in. So when it was getting painted on June 16th, that means that beautiful Wimbledon white was being applied instead of Oxford white, that is the normal GT350 color. And then if you notice, it goes from paint to the body shop. Now body shop is not what you think. It's not like they're repairing damage and stuff. Body shop is they're going to apply the racing stripes. That's one of the main trim pieces that get added um, because this one is the Heritage Edition. And because of that, you get Wimbledon white and you get the Guardsman blue racing stripes, which is a nice metallic lighter blue, almost like a, a Ford Performance blue style to the racing stripes. That's all going to happen at that body shop. And then if you notice the next step after that, so that was June 19th, then the next step that it went to is the trim line. The trim line is where everything is going to be added on and that car is going to slowly come together. And then if you look, June 25th was the actual born on date. If you want to call that the birthday of my particular Shelby GT350R Heritage Edition, it's going to be June 25th. So now the car is sitting there. And the next step is once they get X amount of cars that are going to be heading to, I'm sure, the southeast portion of the United States, specifically Florida, where I live, that's when the car will be loaded onto a train and then it will be brought to Florida, Tampa, where there's a, a, a train yard there, and then be taken from a truck and put onto a trailer and they bring it right to Walker Ford. Now they're expecting, if you look over on the far right, they're expecting that to happen between July 17th and July 23rd. So still a little bit longer to go. Now this is not my first rodeo ordering a car. I am keeping my expectations very, very low on exactly when I'm gonna get it because 
back in 2015, I ordered a Subaru WRX STI World Rally Blue from Subaru. And I remember that was the first car I've ever ordered, period, brand new car. And it did not go according to plan. The date that I got, I wound up getting the car like a month later. And it was like one of those things that it was sitting at the yard and nobody knew exactly when it was going to show up. So I was really confused and dumbfounded by that whole process. So going into this whole purchase has been a lot better because once I got past the hurdle of, of getting the allocation, remember that was the biggest challenge was the allocation. Um, now it was just simply, okay, when is the, the car going to be built? Now, I know many of you have been watching some of my recent reviews, especially of the GT500. And I know many of you see my facial expressions. You, you uh, see me having an eargasm and, and all that on throttle response. Trust me, the Shelby GT500 is an amazing vehicle. It definitely, you saw what it, what it did to me in those reviews. And you'll see more reviews where I'm driving GT500, so don't you worry about that. But a lot of people were putting in the comments section, they were saying, Joe, I guess you're going to be canceling your order for the GT350R and get the GT500. No, that's not happening. And that's not happening for a million and one different reasons. Number one reason is that's where I, I really learned to be a car enthusiast was inside of a Shelby GT350. If you're not aware of this, my father had a 1969 Shelby GT350. I'll, I'm going to throw a picture of that up right now. That car being a kid, I remember every Saturday going for a ride with my dad in that car. And it's funny because when we lived in Brooklyn, New York, my dad actually did not keep the car at our house because there wasn't enough room. So he actually rented a garage space. And I always, it was always interesting to me because going down, I had to, we had to drive down this long alley and then there was this row of garages and I always remember Saturday morning him opening up the garage door after we went down that alley and, and just seeing that beautiful Shelby GT350 and then once getting into it and sitting there and seeing the Cobra emblem all over the interior and stuff it, it just and that firing up of the V8 that 351 engine um, was just a special special thing for me to experience so there's a, a connection there that goes back ever to when I was a kid. Now, when they came out with the, the current Shelby GT350, I knew exactly that I wanted one, but I had no way the, the means to be able to go out and buy one. Obviously, because of all your great support, my wonderful wife, Lori, and, and all the, the great work that we're doing here, we're able to have this happen. Why do I like the car so much? Well, when we go R, we're getting carbon fiber wheels. We're getting carbon fiber rear wing. Of course, the Heritage Edition. I've already explained what that really means, um, especially because I'm a, I'm a big history guy. I love the idea of a GT350, where it has come from since 1965. And now with the Heritage Edition, I really feel like this one is made for me because not only am I ordering it, but it has that connection with the way that it's it's styled and the and the way that it looks and definitely the way it performs that 5.2 liter flat plane crankshaft V8 there's no other engine like it in Ford's lineup nor will there ever be plus the fact that 2020 is the last year now the pictures that you've been seeing of a GT350R sitting at a dealership that is not mine that is a subscriber who um, I'm part of this GT350 forum on Facebook he sent me those photos so I'm just using those so that everybody has something to look at instead of just my mug. But um, don't think that that's mine yet. That is not mine yet. But looking at, at his car, you could clearly see why so many different reasons why I love that car and, and why it's so special. And, and of course, the, the, the experience of driving it, that manual transmission. I mean, I remember, and I'm going to throw a picture up of it in this video, my now good friend Andrew, who was once a subscriber, out of the blue, he reached out to me and he's like, hey, uh, I'm going to be out of town for four days. Do you want to borrow my Shelby GT350? He had a 2016 GT350 Oxford white with the blue racing stripes. And I was just like mind blown. But I remember when I first got into that car, I was like, wow, I feel right at home. As soon as I fired it up, clutch in, put in first gear, release that clutch. It was like 
the, the car was, was built for me. So these are the reasons, just a, a, a handful here of what the car means. And plus, going back to when I was 16 years old, and I remember I bought my first car, a 1985 Pontiac Firebird. All my friends started getting 50 Fox Body Mustangs. I, I wanted to save up and get a Fox Body. Instead, I bought this guy's used Corvette, which wound up being a dream come true. But there's always been this connection with me and the Mustang, and I've never owned one. That's the crazy thing. This will be not only my first Mustang, but we're going, we're going all the way. Shelby GT350R. So that is the update. The car is built. It's sitting at the factory. We're now going to wait for that Shelby to come on home to me. And we're going to pick it up right at Walker Ford. So we're going to be bringing you more of the behind the scenes stuff. Fingers crossed I'll be able to get down to Walker Ford when the truck shows up. See the Shelby coming off the trailer and then going through the PDI process. Uh, what PDI stands for is pre-delivery inspection process of the car. And then all the other things that we're going to do. But the whole thing that's great about this I have you guys along for the ride, and literally you will be on the ride because we'll be driving it together. So stay tuned for all that. But if it's things like these, these, these little vlogs talking about behind the scenes stuff, especially with the Shelby GT350R Heritage Edition, if you want to keep seeing stuff like that, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you. Thank you for sharing this special moment, and thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. I got to thank my wonderful, beautiful, sexy, intelligent wife, Lori, not only being okay, give me the thumbs up for that Shelby, but also being my production manager and awesome videographer and everything else great in this world. So thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.